Hello. This, uh, this thing on? This thing on? Um, hi, yeah, welcome to Digital Labs. Uh, it's a great honor to be invited back um, today and to be on such a great bill alongside Break, Optical and Compa is a, quite an honor for me, actually. So, yeah, and thanks for everyone for coming as well. I can't really see you because the light's from my face, but that's probably a good thing. Um, cool, so you can see I've got uh, all this kind of, all these contraptions and things around me. So, what I wanted to do t with you guys today was kind of um, show you some sound creation ideas and give you some ideas that are not strictly within the box. Um, I guess I kind of figured that Optical and Break and Compa, they, they're going to be doing kind of mainly sort of laptop computer software sort of stuff, which is great. Um, but I figured it would be, I, I just thought it would be quite a nice change and a sort of a different angle to show you some, some sound creation means from outside the box. Uh, using like stuff that doesn't actually cost hardly any money, mainly junk and, and sort of bits of crap, really. So um, I'm going to kick things off. Uh, right, so, okay. So why, why would we, what, why would we um, use bits of stuff or sort of other electronic means or other, other ways of creating sound uh, outside the box? Can anyone kind of give me any suggestions why you might do that? Unique sound? sound yeah. Yep. Something yeah, something different. Uh, something yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, one thing, I read this thing recently. You might have read it. Um, computers were very good, are very good tools for what they were designed for, which is for use in offices, for sending emails, for writing, and doing word processing. I don't know. I mean, arguably, for me, it's not necessarily the best tool for making music or, or generating ideas or being creative. You know, you've got your mouse as your main kind of interface between you and the computer, and it's not necessarily the best interface. Obviously, you can get controllers and, and make it more interactive. But yeah, it's kind of getting yourself involved as, as a person and kind of interacting with bits of equipment is kind of a bit more fun than just staring at a screen and pushing the mouse around and moving things around. Any other reasons why we might do stuff outside the box or kind of get other things involved. Any other ideas? All right, okay, cool. Well, here's a few kind of ideas that I came up with. Um, everyone has the same tools. So if you're just working with Logic or Pro Tools or Ableton, whatever it is you use, everyone has access to that same kind of um, library of sounds, banks of instruments, um, effects, and all that kind of stuff. So you need to work hard to make what you do sound really different. Uh, you want to be individual, so it's kind of part of your USP or you, you, your unique selling point um, is to kind of do something different and think think outside the box. Uh, put a bit of noise and grit back in because everything sounds so clean and nice these days, so get a bit of noise and dirt back in there. Get physical and in interact with, uh, with stuff, basically. Create sound from everyday junk experiment, and mainly because it's fun and we're kind of tactile beings, aren't we? It's nice to touch things, it's nice to move things and interact and hear the kind of the things that come from that. So those are a few ideas. Um, so what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today are things that you can uh, make, build and create to make noise and weird sounds and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to be starting off with contact microphones. Um, and then I'm going to show you how I, I sort of built my own spring reverb, which is this contraption here. Um, I'm going to show you how to pick up electromagnetic radiation frequencies um, and use those sonically. And I'm going to show you how to use feedback within a shitty old mixing desk um, by taking an output and putting it into an input to create a feedback loop, how we can generate sound and basically turn a really boring uh, crap piece of kit into a very interesting instrument. Um, so I'm going to show you all this stuff within the next 40 minutes, <laughs> hopefully. So we'll try and get through. So um, I'm going to start off by telling you about these contact microphones that I made with a friend of mine. Um, has anyone seen these before? Piazzo microphones, Piazzo microphones. Basically, um, this is one here. You can kind of see it there. You can buy them in little baggies from um, Maplin's 
for about a quid each, and you can get different size ones, and they all have a diff slightly different frequency response, uh, depending on the size that you use. So they're really easy to wire up. You just uh, basically wire them up to a jack lead or an XLR lead. So here's some uh, little pictures of me wiring them up. And they make really interesting microphones, because they only work when they're in contact with something. So anything that you stick it on, anything that resonates, uh, it picks up the resonation of that um, object that you stick it to. Um, and they're about this. So one lead will cost you about £2.50 to make with the plug on the end if you're kind of into, uh, if you're happy to do a bit of soldering. Um, and also, you can take it one step further. I actually got this stuff called Plasti Dip um, off the internet, which was about 15 quid, but you get a bit pop, big tub of it. And you can dip them in plastic to coat them and make them waterproof. So I've made an underwater contact microphone um, using using just some bits that I bought from Maplin's, basically. It's quite fun when you get the plastic dip. You just kind of start thinking, oh, I wonder what I can coat in plastic. You just start coating loads of stuff in plastic just for fun. Broccoli and just stuff out of the fridge. <laughs> um, so uh, this is, so this setup is quite sketchy. So some of this might not work, some of it might work. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of show you some of the sounds that you can create from all this stuff. And then I'm, I'm in a Blue Peter style, I'm going to show you kind of what I can, you can then do with it and how I've done some stuff with it. Um, so first of all, this is my contact microphone. Um, it's going into a, a guitar stomp pedal just to, to raise the volume up a bit because uh, it's quite quiet. Um, I'm going to turn this on. Okay, so you can hear it there. Things like balloons are quite good because they they make a whole array of noises. Um, anything from sort of scraping noises, and if you if you get it right and you and you flick them at the right point, this isn't really doing it very well. But you can get a really fat 808 style kick drum sound, like a boom boom. But that's not really doing it now. Um, So yeah, all kinds of interesting sounds from just using a balloon. Um, I'm going to show you this thing now. Right, I've just got a bit of an obsession with springs at the moment for some reason. This is like a kid's toy um, called like a, sh a, sh a zoom tube or something like that. Basically, uh, it makes loads of cool noises. Um, and it's just a spring that goes from one end to the other. Um, so what we can do is attach a contact mic to the spring. And I'm just going to turn the input down on that for just a sec. Oh yeah, things like tape are actually quite good. Whee. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so, uh, right, two secs. Okay, so I'm going to shove this contact mic inside the spring, like so. And then show you some of the sounds you can just get from from this. So all sorts of crazy sound that you can get because the contact mic's in contact with it. It's picking up the resonation from said spring. So um, those are just a few kind of ideas of what you can do with contact mics. You can also stick them to things like, I bought this uh, off a gypsy at Christmas down at the Christmas market. It's totally out of key and it's totally out of tune and stuff. But, uh, but I think James actually bought one as well. I've seen him earlier on. He mugged you off as well. Yeah, 
it cost 10 quid as well. I was just like, got it home and looked at it. It's, it's half a coconut with some metal stuck to it. But it's stuff like that that, uh, you know, you can get some quite interesting stuff from. So let's see if this is going to work. Ooh. So because it's in contact with the wood that's resonating, you get some quite interesting stuff. Yeah, just some ideas, but any, literally anything that you stick this to, metal is quite a good one, sheets of metal um, that resonate, doors, you can hit it. If I stick it to the table, see if this will work. You can, it basically picks up the resonation of anything it's in contact to. So they're really fun and you can get like whole sort of arrays of different sound palettes from these. Um, so that's kind of what I want to show you with contact mics. The next thing that I was going to show you was, okay, yeah, I'll come back to the spring reverb in a minute um, and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so electromagnetic frequencies. Um, I downloaded this picture off the internet. I don't really understand it, to be honest, but I put it on there because it looks quite cool. Um, but essentially, electromagnetic radiation is all around us, and anything that makes, uh, that's electronic, and has, especially things with moving parts, give off loads of electromagnetic radiation. Things like wireless routers, your phone, you know when uh, you walk past the speaker and you've got a text coming in, your phone, you hear it come through the speaker. That's basically picking up the electromagnetic radiation from your phone. So we can actually pick this up, harness this, using coil pickups, um, which are exactly the same as what you get on a guitar. Your guitar, your electric guitar has a load of coil pickups which pick up the vibration of the, uh, of the string. And what it is, basically a, a slug of metal with a load of copper wrapped around it, um, and that's a pickup. I think radios work in a similar way um, to pick up the frequency, the radio waves. Um, so this is basically uh, what's called a telephone tap or a coil pickup it basically i don't know if you've ever seen um old films and and they're kind of like the old spy movies or whatever and they're tapping the phone and they've got a little thing stuck to the receiver recording uh, the phone that's what this is basically um you can buy these off the internet and you can get them from maplins uh it's basically just a bit of metal with a load of copper wrapped around it and attached to the copper is a lead with a jack lead on it so we can actually pick up and harness electromagnetic radiation in the air. And loads of stuff makes loads of really interesting sounds. So again, I'm going to stick it into this stomp box. And, so, yeah. uh, and then you can start picking up the radiation. So if I get this in, I don't know. It's going to start working. Uh, why is it not working? Um, have I got a feed coming out of the amp? Oh, here we go. Okay, cool. So anything that's electric, you can pick up the radiation from it. Things like fuse boxes are quite cool. I know it says loads of electronic stuff over here, so I'm going to go and have a play with that. Also, your computer. Do you know, like, your computer has a heartbeat? Which is pretty weird. Hang on. If I can find it. Okay, so that's just my computer making that kind of weird noises. I'm just going to take this over. Let's see, how, how long have I got? How long is the lead? Ah, oh, maybe the lead isn't that long. Let's see. Has anyone got, um, let's try this with my phone. Uh, can someone ring my phone? Has anyone got a phone? 
Okay, uh, there's James on that. Oh, it's not available. Oh, right, it's because I'm on it. It's because I'm doing the talk, man. <laughs> uh, hold on, I just, uh, I've just taken airplane mode off. Hold on. Yeah, it'll work now. Talking to it? Yeah, pretty freaky. <laughs> cool. So that's basically um, how electro that's electromagnetic radiation. Um, what, what, was that? what was that type of mic called again? It's called a coil pickup. You can make them yourself if you've got a soldering iron. Yeah. You can make them. You just get a, a slug of metal or even a nail will probably work. And you get a load of copper, just copper, thin copper wire, wrap it round, uh, and then attach a jack lead to each, well, uh, you've got the two uh, ends of the wire and attach those two ends to a jack lead and that'll work um, as a coil pickup, basically. So, yeah, anything that's electronic, like, has anyone got anything, I don't suppose anyone has on them that's electronic, that's got moving parts, or a camera with a zoom on it? Right, I guess that would work. I haven't actually got a watch. Has anyone got a camera with a zoom on it? Yeah, if you bring that down, that should be quite fun. Let's have a go at that. Nice. Cool, so if you turn it, the camera should be good, quite good anyway. Okay, so is it, if it's zooming in and out. Yeah, and it, does it do anything else with the zoom? Like in and out slower or anything? Or like faster? Uh, oh no, it needs to be like electric, electronic. <laughs> Quite cool though. But yeah, so. You are all dead now, that's. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, this amp will probably make some weird noise. Does it make some noise? Yeah, so you get loads of 50 hertz mains hum uh, from loads of stuff, but just it's kind of fun. Like I got loads of funny looks because I, I had this plugged into a portable recorder and I was going around my studio building and uh, it's like a public building and then out into the street and stuff with this thing with headphones on, kind of going around like <laughs> monitoring like fuse boxes and stuff like that. People are just like, what's this guy up to? Like I'm searching for bombs or something like that. Oh, this is quite cool. Okay, so we've got a bit coming up here. But yeah, like... Anything that moves or has moving parts um, and is electric gives off electromagnetic radiation. So you can get loads of sounds out of it. And I'll show you some other stuff that I recorded in a bit. Um, cool. So that's electromagnetic stuff. Um, right. Let me show you. I'll show you the spring reverb next. Um, and then I'll show you some feedback stuff. So the spring reverb. Um, I made this, uh, I started making it with my friend Bobby, um, but I didn't have a chance to finish it off with him. He actually finished it. This is Bobby here um, with his pet parrot on his shoulder, which is, his his uh, his bedroom is a workshop, basically, a tiny bedroom, and he's got all this workshop stuff. He's a creative genius, and he's a, a bit, a big, a bit, uh, been a big inspiration on me and, and kind of thinking creatively with, with sound and, and different things that make noise. Um, so he's, he's yeah, quite a creative genius and he has this bird that flies around in his room just sitting on your shoulder and on your head and stuff as you're trying to do stuff. Um, okay, so Spring Reverb, this, I made this for 10 quid. Um, and what it is basically is it's stereo, it's got two speakers, a speaker at one end of the pipe uh, and, and at the other end. And it's got a slinky spring which is glued to... Uh, the speaker at one end and it's glued to the speaker at the other end. Um, 
So there's the, the spring, which cost a quid from a toy shop. This little stereo amplifier kit, um, which has the two speakers and the amp, this cost 10 quid from Maplin's, or 8 quid or something like that. Uh, and you kind of wire it up yourself. It's all, the circuitry is already built, but you just wire the speakers on. Um, so we've got this spring, and then this really like high uh, bonding glue stuff. You have to mix the two chemicals together. Um, and then we stuck the spring to the speaker uh, at both ends. So stretched out, and that's, that's, basically, that's basically it. So we've got the, spe uh, the spring at one end, and then at the other end. And then here's the little amp with a feed going, a feed going from the uh, from the desk or from your computer into the uh, the amp, and then that gets amplified, sent down the spring, and vibrates the spring. So it vibrates the spring with whatever you're putting through it, and then I've got a contact mic stuck to the spring. So the signal gets fed through the spring, it reverberates with the spring, it shakes, uh, which gives like a, an approximation of, of kind of basic reverb. And then you can pick that up with the contact mic, which then goes back in. So uh, just on its own, without anything sort of feeding through it, you get some quite, quite cool noises anyway. But when you send stuff through it, it kind of comes to life. And so only certain things you can send through. It's not very good with drums, um, but sort of things like pads and stuff like that. I'll show you an example if this works. Hopefully it will. Um, okay, so this is just a really boring, um, just a really boring piano chord. It's just with nothing on it, uh, which sounds like. Let's just take that off for a sec. Sounds like. Uh, with that, it's just a MIDI uh, keyboard in Logic, the EVP, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to send that to the spring. Um, and then the spring should be coming back in on this one. So, you So already it's just got a whole load more character than it had before. Which sounds quite nice. Um, so yeah, you can send all sorts of different things. Let me just change the instrument and see what it sounds like with something else. Um, I haven't really had, because it only got finished the other day, I haven't really had that much chance to kind of um, experiment with it too much. I'll just try it with some strings. Um, Uh. Oh. So yeah, without it, um oh, hang on. Yeah, it sounded kind of better before, but yeah, you get the general idea. So, uh, so yeah, spring reverb, you can make it for like 10 quid, and you've got your own unique reverb that you can then use on various things. And it's really fun to kind of get involved and make stuff, build stuff, uh, get creative with what you've got around you. Um, so that's the spring reverb. How are we doing on time? Let's do quite well. Okay, cool. So I'm going to... I've got about 10, how, how long have I got left, Joan? 10 minutes. Can I just ask, what, what the, is that in a tube, is it? Is that yeah, it's just in a bit of drain pipe. Right, okay. It's just in a bit of drain pipe. Um, so, yeah, and it's, it's stereo. So um, it's got a stereo feed, one fe one's feeding in one end and one's feeding in the other end, which is quite unique. I think most reverbs you just have. 
Yeah, totally. If you, it's, it's there at the moment. So, yeah, just experiment. Whichever way, you can hang it up the other way around. As long as the, the, the spring isn't touching the sides. Um, and you can, yeah, you can experiment with multiple pickups on, uh, pickup mics on it. So you can have 10 mics on there if you wanted to. But, yeah, just kind of different ways of thinking about um, reverb and sound, basically. Right, so the next thing I want to show you, I'm going to crack on as quick as I can, um, is the feedback through a desk. So this is just a crappy old Behringer mixing desk, which is unusable, really, because it sounds, it's really hissy and it just sounds really crap. So um, what I'm going to do is turn it into an instrument. Uh, okay, by using a mixing desk. Now, this is something that you can all try, but... Be really careful with this because it's feedback. Um, it's uh, yeah, it just it keeps feeding back and feeding back. And you, I've blown up so much stuff with this. Um, I've blown up uh, sound interfaces, uh, which cost hundreds of pounds. I've blown up a couple of really nice guitar effects pedals uh, and speakers and all sorts of stuff. So you need to be really careful. It's kind of like an untamable beast. This thing and. You, it's unpredictable. You never know really what it's going to do. So just be careful and don't, I wouldn't do it through a really nice valve desk or anything. Just do it through a basic piece of crap like this. Um, so what you do is you take an output and stick it into an input. So you're creating a feedback loop. So if you just do that with, this has got four outputs. So I'm just going to show you what it's like with one first of all. Okay. So that should generate uh, some feedback. Okay. And then you move the EQs. The EQs become like uh, modulators. <laughs> so you can control it and play it. Okay, so let's like, add something else. So I'm going to take another output and stick it into another input. So I'm creating two feedback loops. So then you start to get weird phasing. Okay, so then. So now I'm going to take another output and put it back into another input. And another one as well. So I've got four... So I've got four, uh, four outputs going into four inputs all going around within the desk. So then you've got... Any, any control on the mixing desk becomes a modulator. So even if it's just a mute control or a bass cut or something like that, it all does something. Um, You get the general kind of idea anyway. Um, so yeah, so you can create all this sound and stuff, which is all very well. It's like, oh, what can we do with that? Um, so once we've got it recorded, we can start to have fun with it. Um, but it's just really great fun actually use, like using this as an instrument and jamming with it. And the more you jam with it, the more kind of weird and wonderful stuff comes out. Um, so I'm just going to show you, like, uh, I've got Logic here. Um, so... Hey? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, it's just a distortion pedal. But yeah, I can do that quickly. Uh, but I'm kind of running out of time. But I want to show you this, uh, another thing that you can do with this stuff. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it just gives you more points to modulate, I guess. Etc. Etc. Right. Okay. So uh, hours of fun. Literally, I spend hours doing this kind of thing. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, oh, where is it? Okay. So here's a load of noise that I made uh, previously. Um, so this is like feedback stuff and electromagnetic radiation stuff. Um, So it's all just amazing source sound for. I mean, you couldn't get, you couldn't make that kind of thing very well, very easily, at least in something like Massive or some native instruments. There aren't any uh, sort of instruments that do this kind of thing, and it's so unique. Uh, all of these things that you're kind of creating completely unique sound sources. So what can we do with that? It's all very well having all this stuff, but it's like, right. So what do we do? So we've got the sound source, so then we we can chop it up and unpack it. I'm going to show you this program um, called Iris. Has anyone heard of this? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Isotope, um, and it's really cool, basically. Um, I'm just going to show you. Here's something I made earlier, but I'm just going to show you uh, the kind of process. So, um, okay, so I'm going to open up an Iris, which is a, an instrument. It's basically like... Um, a sampler, uh, but it's wicked. Anything that you drop in it, it instantly works out what pitch it is and it maps it over the keyboard accordingly. So any sound that you drop in there becomes a playable instrument that, that will be in key with everything that you work with uh, within your um, sort of arrangement. But what you can do is grab, um, grab yourself a piece of audio. So I think I've got some here. So this, let's see. Okay, so let's just play that. Okay, so that's uh, that's from electromagnetic radiation. So I chuck that in, and the way that it ma it, it sort of analyzes it, it like spectro analyzes it. So um, it kind of analyzes the, the spectrum of harmonics and kind of frequency within the sound. Um, so you can use like if I just play that back as is, it's told me down here that the the key is B. So that's the original key. So obviously it just works like a sampler in that sense. But what we can do where it come, becomes fun is you can use like um, uh, Photoshop style tools to kind of to bring things out or, or uh, get rid of things. So we just start using this magic wand tool. Just start pulling pulling parts out of the sound. And you can get like, you can get all artistic and stuff. You can start drawing little dots up here. Which is going to pull out the sort of higher order harmonics, but in little dots. Let's see. So you can make all sorts of weird and wonderful noises out of just bits of stuff that you've recorded. So, but you can also chuck in more than one sound. So I can layer up up to four sounds here. So the second sound I could choose. Let's see, a bit of feedback or something. Uh, let me just find a piece. Um, bear with me just two sec. Right, let's grab a bit of that. The thing is with this, you have to like um, export it uh, as an audio file and then bring it back in, like bring it back into your, your bin or whatever. Uh, feedback. Cool. So then I should have that there. Chuck that in on top. 
Okay, so that's telling me that, that the original pitch is G7, but I can make that um, da, 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 a B again, so it would be in, in key with the other. So it's already sounding cool like that, but then I can get my magic wand tool, start pulling out um, bits of it that I want to use or not use. Uh, and get creative. <laughs> and there's loads of effects and all sorts of stuff you can do in here as well. Um, send it all to the to different reverbs or delays or all sorts of stuff. And And you've got something that sounds quite kind of unique at the end of the day. Um, have I got to stop there, James? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, so we've looked at uh, building, creating contact mics, dipping them in plastic to make them waterproof, if that's something you want to do. Uh, we looked at electromagnetic radiation with coil pickups. We looked at feedback through a desk and making an instrument out of a shitty old mixing desk and how to build your own spring reverb for 10 quid and then what to do with that. So yeah, that concludes my talk. Hopefully that was interesting and a little bit different to what you might have been expecting. Uh, just, just quickly, can I ask um, what the signal path was again for that last one? Just so I know the way it was moved. For, for the yeah, feedback? For the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh right, you just take all the outputs and stick them into the inputs. Just literally just put the Output into an input creates a loop and whatever tiny little bit of noise is generated, it feeds back and feeds back. Uh, I'll quickly show you this. Yeah, that's a bit about feedback, basically. Um, but yeah, any all the out. Well, you need one output to go to your recording. So I've taken the headphone out, which is going to uh, the amp, which is allowing you guys to hear it. Uh, all that will go into your sound card. Um, but be careful with the the levels because it will just get louder and louder and louder if you're not careful. And then all the other out outputs are going into input. So the, so the only signal there that you're generating is just from the noise from the desk, basically. Yeah. Yeah, basically, and then EQs and stuff will just sort of modulate that. Yeah. How are you sort of stopping it from destroying the amp? Because I'm going out of the headphone output, which is like a sort of separate amp with it, or not amp, or like controller within the desk. So you've got kind of control over the amount. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's much better if you can go out of the uh, desk into a limiter or a heavy compressor, something like that. It's better, because then you've got more control. And then you can go out through effects and do... I was going to go out through an effects pedal, but this would have been a bit more more sort of stress, really. But yeah, so that's, that's the talk, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Cool.